Well, it's another day and another problem. So yesterday, I um, noticed the hot water had low pressure, about half the flow as the cold. And I thought, well, something else to work on. And now, woke up this morning, I had no pressure whatsoever on the hot side. I believe I know what it is. I think it's my check valve. I was trying to get it to duplicate the problem again, if I, if I can get it to work. I'm just, what I'm doing, I'm just gonna bump the, the switch here get the water pressure off because if the flow gets too fast I believe the spring is broken in the check valve and that little disc is just fl flopping around in there there's a check valve uh, on the um, back side of the water heater I'm pretty sure it is on this one I've, I've seen this before in other RVs so now I've got the faucet on the cold side and it should flow just fine on the cold side all right let's go to the hot side I just bump it up the water pump Okay, now I'm going to go full blast with it. So I just pop it, get a small stream, it does okay. Well, let's go wide open and see what happens. Wide open. Still going. Okay, that's that's the exact same I had, had happened ye yesterday. Very low water pressure on the hot side. So if you've got a symptom like this, you've got really good cold, So very slow, low pressure, ow, that's hot water. But low pressure on the hot side, I believe we gotta check out that fault. This is doing this, and then this morning it, it got to where it was, I had zero water pressure. It just depends on that little check out how, how it wants to act. Sometimes that check out here. We'll get in the, in the wrong way and shut off the flow completely. So now I'm going to crawl into the RV and hopefully I'll locate this check valve and get this fixed. Okay, you see I'm underneath the RV and I'm in a Model 38J Winnebago and this is the access panel to the rear of my water heater. Of course every RV is a little bit different so uh, I'm going to dig into this and hopefully my check valve will be there. Alright, got all the screws out. Get the panels off. And there's ventilation where I put that in there years ago just to help the basement area out. That's the water heater. Down all the way. Alrighty, I'm about to get some more light, ain't I? Oh, okay, that's much better. Alright, so I do believe that that's going to be my troublemaker right there. So I'm going to have to uh, give me some more tools, channel locks, and get in there and, and investigate a little bit further. Make sure this is the problem. Alright, first up we want to turn off the electric heating element. It won't burn nothing up. Water pump's off, water pressure's off, and let's get a couple tools. And also for this project, you'll need your 15 16 socket. Be sure you have one of those in your toolbox to drain the water heater. Some channel locks, ratchet, I should be good to go. So our water heater is at Atwood. And here's what, what we do, just take this drain plug loose. And you want to, because I, I tripped the, the valve here, just get the pressure off. Remember to make sure the water pump is off water hose is disconnected if you hooked up in, in a campground and because you do not want to remove this plug that tank is full of water pressure you will not like it you will get a whole lot of water quick all over you so I'm doing this so I don't make such a mess on the back side when I take that valve loose get it drained down there we go Let that bubble out for a little bit and then we'll get back under there and take things apart And this is where it comes in handy to have a short pair of channel locks. And get it here and loosen this up. I'm not sure if I got enough drained or not. Hopefully I don't make a mess. Now I better get two hands on this. Okay, it took a little strategizing, but I think I'm finally about to get this loose. It was very tight. First I had just a crescent wrench, and that wasn't working at all. This takes a one inch socket. 
So I got me a one inch socket, half inch drive. So check your toolbox, make sure you got that on hand because you never know this could happen to you someday. But the problem was every time I went to break it free, the water pump was twisting and moving, or not the water pump, the water heater was twisting and moving around. I was afraid I was gonna break something off. So I needed a way to keep it from moving. So I wedged in uh, these little blocks and levelers between the floor and, and the water heater. So it made it good and tight. So that way I could get enough leverage to push up on it and break it free. It's pretty snug. So that helped out greatly, that little trick did. So let me get this out and look, look at the inside of it and see what we see. Okay, I can get it out with my finger. Alright, so here we are. And, okay, let's see. Alright, so there's a little check valve. And a check valve should not fall out like that. But at one time, there was a spring in there. There was a spring on the back side. So it always... It normally would sit like this. So when you'd, when you'd open up the, the water faucet to the hot water, the, the water would flow only one direction. And the spring would, would keep it in check whenever you could cut the water pressure off. This is in here for, so when you, um, when you winterize, you now you got you can pump antifreeze throughout the system and it keeps you from pumping five gallons antifreeze into your water heater. This whole device does. So for now, to have hot water, I'm just going to leave this out. The spring is most likely down inside the, uh, the water heater. So maybe it'll come out someday when I do a flush. I'm going to just put this back together without that. And I bet we'll have hot water. Let's see. So before I put this back in, uh, you know, I've gutted it so I can at least have hot water. I got the numbers off of it. It's a G-784 half inch and I found one here on Amazon and there's my number half inch check valve so I'm gonna get that on the way it'll be here Thursday I still don't like they still got the little plastic design but this thing lasted since 2005 so I guess it'll be all right it wasn't too awful bad to, to get to and get apart the biggest thing I had the right tools with me if I didn't have the tool right tools with me that could have been a lot, lot more of a problem so uh, I'm gonna get this on the way go back under there put this in and Make sure we have hot water. Okay, so I've got it screwed in there. I got it good and snug. Remember this little rubber grommet of a thing it goes in there. And then the pec pex line goes on top of it. But it's going to take me two hands, most likely, to get that lined up and snug that up. Turn on the on the water pressure and we'll see if it works. Okay, it's time for a test. So it's cold water works fine. Let's go hot water and I'll put full pressure. No problem. So now we'll have hot water. All because of that little bitty check valve. See how quick your vacation get, can get messed up by just a little part going bad on you. So, uh, but luckily what, what saved me today is because I had the right tools to get it apart and, and to, to gut, gut the part and put it back together and you know, it just took me about an hour and a half maybe troubleshooting it and tracking it down and I'll get the new one on on order and I'll have it here in a couple of days well it's time to put this water heater back together and I got my parts in uh, here's what I ordered got it in half inch check valve I was wanting to mention to you though it, it possibly if you're not used to plumbing you may take yours out and you may measure it because like when I went online it showed um, a half inch and three quarter. So you might accidentally measure yours and say, well, that, mine's three quarter. No, that's not true. It's actually a half inch because you got to measure by the inside diameter, not the outside diameter. So be aware of that. So this is, mine was a half inch, but I remember when I went to order on Amazon, you had a choice of a half inch or three quarter. I assume most are half inch. I don't know that I've ever seen a three quarter in an RV before, but probably different applications may have that. And of course, you can see what it's supposed to look like. You got the little spring. Because with when when I took ours apart, so that's what we was looking at. We had no spring. The spring and all that is down in the water heater still. Till well, I guess it'll be there till I flush it out someday. But one thing I don't like is it's a 
very small little clip right here and it's just over over the years it's just eroded away and caused it to come loose because normally you got to have this little o-ring sitting here so its job is to sit in there and and do what check valves do allow allow water to go one way and not the other of course it don't take much it's just a little bit of a clip and over the years that wears off or deteriorates that plastic and hot water all the time so once that 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 happens the spring jumps off and allows this to slide through because on, on this end because we've got that rubber seal for the pex line that, that sits like this so what was happening for me is as soon as i turn on the hot water this thing would slide up initially i could first start out i was just I've had low water pressure, so I believe my O-ring had, had jumped off and got maybe maybe a little sideways that way, so it it was creating some water flow. I had about half half water pressure, and then the next day I had none, because that's when it probably completely sealed off. And I have seen them fail in, in a different way, to where is you when you turn on the hot water, you get one squirt of hot water, then it would stop. It just you know one and you know maybe a half ounce of water, because what would happen as soon as the water starts to flow. It would check because it had no spring to pull it back and you shut the water off and and drop the water pressure and then it would maybe slide back out of the way but as soon as you turn on the hot water and the water started flowing again it sealed itself off again of course the wrong direction so anyway so i got my new, new parts i'm fixing to go back under there and put it together but i want to try to make it a little, a little bit better if i can because I know in time this is probably going to do the same thing because it's just such a small little clip that, that holds that in place if you can even see it so I thought what I might do uh, get me a hot knife cigarette lighter or something other and mushroom this piece of plastic out just a little bit just make it a little bit wider diameter so uh, even if that clip fails years down the road it will still be on there it won't ho hopefully shut off my water water flow so that's what I'm going to do, and also keep in mind something to add to your toolbox is some uh, some, te some Teflon tape. So luckily I had some on my toolbox, I didn't have to go out and buy any. So I'll crawl back under there and wrap these threads up, put things back together, and make sure we don't have a leak. Alright. I think it'll work if I can get it to focus a little bit better. Okay, you see how I mushroomed it out? So it just took me a little lighter here, lit it, let it burn just for a second, then blew it out, and it created a more of a, a more of a mushroom. So I don't think I'll have to worry about that ever happening again. So it'd be nice if they did that from the factory, but I don't guess they ever will. So that might be a, a little good good tip if you want yours to last longer. I think I see something. Is my spring in there? I think it is. Back out of the way. Now, okay. Well, there's the old spring. Now see if I can carefully get that out. Let me find me a, some more tools to hook it and get it out of there. All right, let's see if we can do some surgery here. I don't know. I see it in there. Get out of there. There we got it. All right, is there anything else in that little hole back in there? All right, so I got the spring out anyway. The little spring, so it'll be flopping around. Well, that's interesting. So the little plastic part, it must be in the water here, I'm assuming, or maybe it just completely de completely deteriorated. All right, there's the new part. And there we go. That installed. Good tape on there now. 
one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this uh, panel loose. Well, once I get it all put back together and pressurized, I'll uh, not tighten everything up as far as the panel goes until tomorrow because I want to come back out here because I do have I've got a little bit of water down here. I want to make sure all that's dried up. No, nothing creating any more rust than what I've already got. Get the right direction. go to two hands get this snugged up good and of course this is very important do not lose this little piece because you won't like it if you do you'll have lots of leaks so when you're taking things apart go slow be mindful catch your parts and I gotta take two hands because I gotta pull this back and get the PEX pipe in there and then snug up that nut Okay, now let's turn the water on, get water pressure, and make sure there's no leaks. Okay, back inside, got everything all, all, all the air is burped out of it. You said that this flow is cold, or it's hot, both are the same. So now I'll crawl back under there and check for leaks. And wouldn't you know it, we do have a leak. Got a little bit of a drip there, so I can't have that. So I'm going to put a little bit more torque on it. I just got determined. Yeah, it looks like it's coming from from the lower threads, not the upper. So let's torque, torque it down just a tad bit more. Okay, well, it looks like we got no drips, but of course it's not heated up yet either. So I'll let it heat up overnight and check it tomorrow. I'll make sure everything stays good and dry. And if that's the case, we'll button everything up. Okay, so next day, and I'm about to crawl onto the RV, make sure everything's good and dry before I button this up. But I got to thinking about that uh, when I, I found that spring, and the fact is, I wonder where that little piece of plastic went off to. And I could feel a piece of pipe. So I found this picture here online where someone had took that water heater, same type, and did a cutaway of it. So um, as you can see here, gotcha. Well, it's the next day, and I'm fixing to crawl under the RV and make sure everything's good and dry and button everything up. But I got to thinking about, you know, the, I showed you yesterday had that little spring. I was able to pull the spring out, but I was wondering where my little plastic piece was. And I noticed when I stick my finger, I could feel a pipe, and I was curious of what was going on, how it was made. So I found this picture online, this cutaway. This is a Atwood water tank is what I have. And, of course, this, this is the back side, and that's the front side. And right in behind that piece of pipe there is where my little check valve fits. And so when that little uh, piece uh, eroded away, the spring popped off, was in there, but there's that, there that little plastic retainer. So I'm assuming it would have went all up the pipe and now it's laying down here in the bottom somewhere. So uh, it'll maybe it'll flush out someday. But it was, it was interesting because that's the cold water. That's where the cold water comes in at. And then you, of course, you get your electric heating element. But look, look how much space is still in there. Well, let me back up here. This is the drain side. So when you drain the water out, you still holds quite a bit. Um, of course, you got this big pipe here. That's when you you fire up the, the flame. The flame travels through here to heat up the water that's surrounding it. So I thought that was kind of interesting to know how it, it works inside. Of course, this makes sense because the hot, I guess the hot water stays more to the top. So you want to pull the hottest water off the top. And not off the bottom so that makes sense as to why they got that tube in there so anyway I thought that was cool I'm gonna crawl under there and make sure everything's dry and put this back together 
Well, 24 hours later, all is dry. Not a drip. So that looks good. So I got that part solved, took care of, and I'll finish putting this panel back in here and gather up my tools to be done with this. Um, I just want to show you something while I'm under here. I may have mentioned this. I can't, not for sure. But um, the routing of the of these hoses, I just want to explain to you what's what's going on here. What's what? Because these pipes here, because this is the W24 chassis, and uh, this with our, the coolant from the engine is flowing through these pipes. It flows up this hose, goes into the back of the water heater, come, you know, heats up the water as we're driving down the road, so we're not, not having to use propane. Heats up the water, comes out. Then this hose that goes out goes into another radiator in behind this panel, and that I believe it's called an auto heater. So it heats up, you got a blower, so that helps keep the basement warm as you're traveling down the road. So then the water flows through it, then it comes back out. This hose here, comes around the corner, comes down, and goes and goes back to the engine. But the uh, reason I mention that is when you're in the RV, I just noticed something here that I need to correct. So look how, how that bolt is, how, how that hose is almost touching it. And it's things like that will get you in trouble. So I'll, I'll do, I'll, I'll remedy this, but just imagine if, if that were a hole in that line going down the road on a 100 degree day and you start losing coolant. Well, the engine's 20 feet up ahead. You ain't gonna have any idea you're spewing out all your engine coolant going down, going down the road. And then you overheat your engine and blow up your engine. That's why I made that, uh, you'll see on my video where I made that engine alarm. Uh, so with my engine, if I don't, have, remember we don't have an idiot light on our workhorse chassis. If we overheat, all, all the way you're gonna catch it is if you happen to catch the gauge going up. But that's why I put that alarm system on my on the, on the engine. So if uh, if I ever hit 220 degrees, an alarm will go off to protect myself. So and also what else can I point out? You may be wondering what are these crazy white hoses. You say yours don't have these hoses. Well, I put this is a little add-on I did. I added a dishwasher years ago. And then order, and the tricky part is I, I put it into the slide mechanism. See so there there's the the slide mechanism and the dishwasher's right above us. And then I had to install low point drains and I had to make the hoses run through this accordion looking thing. So nothing would kink up in the low point drain. So that's why you're seeing these weird hoses that you're not gonna find on yours. But uh, if you want to put a dishwasher in, you can. I'll make a separate video on that. Super. All right, I guess this project is done. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.